Hello guys, welcome back to Car Obsession and welcome to another walk around. This time I'm joined by the brand new Seat Leon. So as always, I will take you around the car, talk you through the specifications and give you my first impressions. So here we go, the brand new Leon, a car which has now entered its fourth generation. The new car is available in no less than six trim levels. SE, SE Dynamic, FR, FR Sport, Excellence and Excellence Lux. Prices range from £19,855 all the way through to £27,435. The car you see before you is the FR, so this is the sportier one. This car would normally start from £23,185, but because this car has got a slightly more powerful engine, the car you see here is £23,515. The FR, in case you don't know, stands for Formula Racing and the idea is this is a sportier model however if, if you want the full fat sporty one you'll have to wait for the Cupra Leon which will hopefully be here soon. Now as part of the FR specification you get a more aggressive front bumper if I bring you down here you'll see the bumper is a bit more sporty. You also get a black grille with a dark grey surround which looks very nice indeed. At the side of the car, as standard, you get 17 inch alloys, which I'm not a massive fan of. They're quite plain and in all honesty, they don't look very fancy. I would expect to see these on a lower trim level, but that's merely my opinion. You also get tinted rear windows, which is pretty standard nowadays. And at the back, you get what appears to be twin exhausts, but I will let you in on a little secret. They are fake. Oh yes, the real exhaust is Cooey! It's right there, hiding underneath the car, hiding in shame. Oh dear, Sayat. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Anyway, that aside, I think this is a really smart, stylish looking car. I love the angles and the lines. Just look at that. Lines so sharp you could cut your hand on them. This is a really good looking car, much better looking compared to the Golf, in my opinion. However, if I were buying this car, I wouldn't go for this colour. This is the magnetic grey, which I must admit does look really nice when the sun hits it. It's got a really nice glisten to it and a really nice fleck in the paintwork. But I would probably go for either the mystery blue or the desire red or perhaps the uh, emotion red. Uh, the magnetic grey, I think, doesn't really showcase this car's design that well, but that's um, subjective, of course. Now, speaking of this specification, well, going back to this specification, I, sh I should say, as standard, I get LED rear lights and I get LED headlights at the front. Not really too sure why I'm coming back here because the lights aren't on, but I will cut to a clip where you can see the LED, uh, LED lights in operation. Now, for once, I've been given a car which has no optional extras. So everything you see on this car is completely standard which makes my life a lot easier. Let me take you inside the car. Now the interior is a nice place to be. It's very decluttered, very minimalistic, but there are some negatives uh, towards that, but I will get onto those in a few moments. Now to complete the FR specification, you do get FR badging on the steering wheel and FR designed scuff plates. Very nice indeed. You get front sport seats, which are comfortable yet supportive. In fact, they are very nice to sit in. In fact, let me demonstrate that now oh, by making my way into the car. Let's close the door. Yes, as I mentioned a few moments ago, the inside is quite minimalistic. And the reason why I say that is because, well, where are the buttons? You've got the hazard button, of course, but apart from that, it's quite plain in here. Well, not boring, but what I mean is there's not many buttons. You do have some down here. So you've got parking brake, auto hold, and the um, lock unlock, and of course the start to stop button, which is pulsating at me now. It's egging me, egging, ugh, get your words out, Aaron. It's egging me on to go out for a drive, but we'll do that a little bit later. You've got red stitching on the on the gear stick and on the steering wheel, a flat bottom, very sporty indeed. And you may have spotted this very, very wonderful digital cockpit. It's not quite as fancy as Audi's virtual cockpit, but don't forget an Audi will cost you more money. As standard, you get a 10 inch touchscreen and 
I, I really like the, the display. In fact, let me turn on the ignition. But sadly, pretty much everything you control on the car is accessed via the touchscreen. And the reason why that is a bit of a negative aspect is because it would be nice to have some physical buttons or dials for, let's say, the climate control, which, as you can see, is touch sensitive down here. And it can be a bit fiddly to operate whilst you're driving. You also have the volume controls here, which, again, can be a little bit fiddly, but you also have volume controls on the steering wheel. Now, there is a way to get around the um, climate control issue. So, for example, if I hit the voice recognition button, it's loading it up. I'm cold. There we go. No problem. It will get warmer at the front right shortly. Uh, and and if I say I'm a hot. I'm a hot. In your own time, love. One moment, please. Please repeat. I'm hot. Call me down. Anyway, you get the idea. It does normally work better than that, I promise. But the, but the touchscreen is very pleasing to look at. It is a, a beautiful display. As standard, I have navigation, which you can see on the left-hand side, DAB radio, Bluetooth and smartphone connectivity, and the button's down here, so that takes you to your main menu a very slick operation hit it again it gives you your tiles makes it kind of look like a, a landing page on a, on a tablet You've got your navigation there radio there well just media in general i should say phone operation smartphone connectivity so your android auto apple carplay and mirror link that just gives you your vehicle status and then hit the little car on the right hand side this takes you through to more controls such as the uh, traction control, lane assist, start-stop system, driver alert system. So yes, pretty much everything's accessed through here. And I love the touchscreen, don't get me wrong, but it can be a little bit fiddly to operate whilst you're driving. Uh, this also has gesture control. So just watch these icons here that I'm zooming in on. Hey, you now have text, so that's pretty cool. In regard to the digital cockpit, you can change the view. So you have a button down here, marked view. Very straightforward. There we go. And you have two buttons there. So you can change the side view. So for example, I can change the one on the right hand side, like so, and hit the one on the left. And I can now change the one on the left hand side. Lovely stuff. This car also has rear parking sensors. So, sorry, no, front and rear parking sensors, I should say. There's no camera, but just watch the near side wing mirror. It folds down automatically, which I really like. But if you don't like that, that can be turned off. This also has park assist as well, which I've not actually tested. I'll have to do that at some point, hopefully. I have time. Let's get rid of that. Yes, so some have complained about the amount of plastics in here, but I still think it, it feels quite nice. It feels fairly premium, so I, I've got no complaints. And one thing I do find a bit odd, you've got the silver trim here on the driver's side, but Seat has decided not to replicate it on the passenger side. So you, it's, you, you have a loss of symmetry. And if you have OCD, that's likely to bug you. So if you're watching this and you do have OCD, I'm sorry, I've probably just triggered you. Um, one thing I do find a bit annoying is Seat has opted to use USB Type-C charging ports, which means that for most people, you'll need one of these, an adapter. Now, Seat is very keen to say this is the most advanced vehicle they've ever made, and I get that, but Seat, just give us standard USB ports. Why are you trying to be fancy anyway you get wireless phone charging again that's standard as i mentioned everything is standard so wireless phone charging just there and uh, let's speak in regard oh actually i forgot to mention i spoke about the climate control earlier it is actually three zones so those in the back get to enjoy it as well let's turn the ignition off for the time being 
Let's speak about the practicality. The door bins are of a very good size. I can fit in a 1.5 litre bottle and I've got space left over for a few snacks. That's handy. Two cup holders in the middle. A centre armrest with storage underneath and you've also got a 12 volt socket. And of course you get a glove box which offers a fair amount of space. Getting a comfortable driving position is easy because this steering wheel adjusts for rake and reach like so. And the driver's seat also has a good amount of adjustment, including lumbar support. Right, let me step out and go into the rear. The new Leon has got a wheelbase which has been extended by 50 millimeters. This means there's more room inside and more importantly, more room for rear passengers. As always, the driver's seat has been set for me. I'm six foot two, let me step in like so. And although I may be a little bit lanky, rear space is surprisingly good. I've got a very good amount of knee room and I've got plenty of leg room. So if I just bring the camera down here, so you can see, there we are. Good leg room, I can really stretch back and relax. Headroom is also pretty ample. So I've got a fair bit left over. So if you are a taller person, fear not, the back of the Leon will be a comfortable place for you. Now, could you fit the three adults back here? No, I think that's going to be quite tight, but for two adults, it'd be fine. And if you're more concerned about carrying children, there are, of course, isofix points. Now, let's speak about the practical elements of the rear. The door bins are of a decent size. As you, as you can see, I've got another bottle here. This is 500 milliliters. You have map pockets if you want to pop your A to Z in here or a magazine. There's no storage in the middle, but you do get the vent for the climate control and you have two more USB Type-C charging ports. And in the middle, you have a center armrest for added comfort. Plus, there are three cup holders here. Lovely stuff. Right, let me show you the boot, which surprisingly, offers the same amount of space as the Mark III Leon, its predecessor, which is perhaps maybe a little bit controversial. Open up the tailgate like so. By the way, I love the new Leon badge. It looks like calligraphy, very posh. As always, the boot is filled with my filming crap, but we'll cut to a clip where the boot is empty. So yes, this offers the same amount of space as its predecessor, which is 380 litres, which is about average for its class. If you want a hatchback with a bigger boot, take a look at the Skoda Octavia. That offers 600 litres, believe it or not, or the Honda Civic that offers 478. There is quite a large load lip into the boot though. So as you can see, it's quite deep. This gives you more space, but if you want to load up bigger heavier items or perhaps dogs or a push chair it may be a little bit inconvenient now you can of course have this car as an estate that offers 617 liters um, which is actually 30 more than before if you want more space in this car you can of course fold down the 60 40 rear seats to give you 1210 liters better still you even have a hatch in the middle so you can feed through longer items such as skis. Now the rear seats do fold pretty flat, but there is a lip between the boot floor and the seats, which may annoy some. You do get a hook either side, so you're gonna hang up a bag of shopping. And for those of you wondering, you don't get a spare wheel, but you do of course get a tire repair kit. There we are. So let me finish by talking through the engine. For that, I will of course need to lift the bonnet. The bonnet releases down here on the passenger side. And this is always fun to do one-handed. There we go, that's pretty easy actually. Let's get the bonnet support up. So the engine you're looking at, this is a 1.5 litre turbocharged four cylinder petrol, which offers 130 horsepower along with 200 newton meters of torque. If you prefer that in pound feet, I will put a caption below to give you that figure. Now, although the FR is the sportier one, the performance is actually a little bit modest. I think that's the, the better way of putting it without being rude. That's because this car will take 9.4 seconds to hit 62 miles per hour and the top speed is 130. So if you want a bit more performance from your, uh, from your Leon, you'll have to wait for the Cupra Leon. Now in regard to economy, I'm sure you're uh, wondering about that. 
This engine on a combined run, say it states, will offer around 50 mpg and in regard to CO2 emissions, this engine emits 125 grams per kilometre. This power is fed through the front wheels via a six-speed manual gearbox. There is the option for a DSG, although I don't think you can have a DSG with this engine, but I may be um, incorrect. You can also have this engine with 150 horsepower, which I believe has a mild hybrid system. And for the Leon as a whole, you can have um, other petrol engines. And you, uh, I believe there's also a diesel engine as well. So, so for Seat, diesel is still a thing. You've got a mild hybrid. I mentioned a few moments ago, there's also a plug-in hybrid coming as well. Now, if you're looking for something that's fully electric, there's nothing at this moment in time, whether Seat will make an electric version of this or make a standalone um, electric car. We'll have to wait and see. But there we are the brand new Seat Leon. If you have any questions or queries, please don't hesitate to drop them in the comment section below. I will answer them as quickly as I can and to the best of my ability. But yes, let me pop the bonnet down to give you one last look at what I believe is a rather sexy car. Yes, there we go. The new Seat Leon. Let me know what you think, guys. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Give you one more walk around the car. Let you drink in its design. And it is pretty much time for me to sign off. So guys, Thank you so much for watching this video. I do hope you have enjoyed it. If so, be sure to like, comment and subscribe. If you are subscribed, don't forget to click the bell icon so you get notified every time I make a video. But until the next time, guys, be sure to keep up the car obsession.